Hey there, I'm Eric Redderbush and I'm with MoCAF. I'm a tintype portrait photographer here in Flagstaff. And today we're gonna to talk about the magic and science behind 19th century photography. I've captured the light, I've arrested its flight, and now I will let the sun draw my pictures. That actually came out of Louis de Guerre's mouth in 1939. And uh, that's what we kind of consider the, the forefront of photography, the very, very start. So uh, Louis de Guerre was kind of a colorful character. He was a, a French guy and he got famous, made his money actually doing um, uh, paintings. And he would do these dioramas as well as this huge elaborate um, paintings in this revolving room. And it was a spectacle. They had light flashing all over the place and illuminating different parts and their sounds and everything. So I would have loved to have been back there for, for something like that. But um, he used the money for those, those ventures for his ultimate passion, which was um, trying to figure out how to capture the light. So for a long, long time, we've known how to create an image. And uh, we had something called the camera obscura. And it was a pretty cool technique of basically uh, lenses that would project the image down onto a surface there. And you could actually take a pen and start to draw and sketch out. Um, and it was a really, really handy tool for painters, for architects. Some of the early processes were trying to basically create a way of uh, making that image stick so they didn't have to do the work of the drawing, right? So early in the 1800s here, you've got all these different photographers that are actually acting more like chemists. And they're trying to figure out all the different solutions um, that are gonna fix this image to a plate. And, um, and that's, that's pretty significant, isn't it? Because uh, before that, all we had was, was uh, people's interpretation of these things. So they, they had drawings, they had paintings, um, and when we actually have a photograph, you've got the actual reflection of reality. Um, it is a historical record of what was happening at that moment. Um, and and this, the science community was really, really interested in this as well because you had, um, you could take a picture of a spider and send it off to a different part of the world and that uh, you would have to have the actual specimen to study the anatomy of this of this spider. Um, you could have just the image of it. Um, and it's not somebody's uh, loose interpretation in, in a drawing that could be flawed there. Um, something else that's kind of fun with, with, uh, with that is a lot of people were uh, kind of annoyed at this new form of, of portraiture. And um, before, you know, if you, if you got your, your portrait done by a painter, you could take his liberties a little bit. Oh, I don't really want that mole in there whatsoever. So if you could just leave that out and uh, could do a little bit thinner, maybe, um, or a little bit, uh, a little bit fatter, whatever you kind of uh, wanted to do and kind of add it onto that. But people were kind of horrified um, when they actually saw an actual picture of themselves in actual in the reality of what they look like and there was definitely some pushback uh, early on. In 1851, an uh, Englishman named Frederick Scott Archer published his process called the wet plate collodion process and uh, what he was able to create from this was a tintype, okay? And that's what I actually make today. So what's a tintype? A tintype is just a silver laden image on a blackened surface here. This one is probably around 140 years old and as you can see it's held up quite well. So this is the same type of photography that I'm going to create with you today and uh, so let's go see how. Okay. Uh, cool. Thing. And any dust, anything that's landing on that, like there's a couple pieces of dust already landing on that, that's going to affect the image actually. So we're going to have little artifacts in there. So I've got the, my, my magic solution, my uh, collodion here. This is what um, Mr. Archer figured out for his process. And just pour it on there. Try not to spill it too much, but. So this solution right here is a liquid right now, but pretty quickly it's 
it's going to start to get gummy. And we want it to not harden all the way. And so for us today, it's probably only going to take about three minutes before it actually hardens. But before that, it's wet plate collodion process. It needs to stay wet the entire time. We're going to stick it into our silver nitrate bath here. Once it goes in there, it's now combining uh, with the silver nitrate. You've got the salts um, are actually switching some molecules with the uh, um, with the silver in the uh, in the bath, and you're actually getting a uh, silver iodide that is, is forming onto this plate here. So it's all temperature de dependent, humidity dependent. Um, so you have to make adjustments whether uh, on your recipes of the actual chemicals or um, on your timing as well. So there's there's a lot involved to, to kind of experiment with and to try to figure out in this process. So um, at this moment, I'm gonna take um, probably about a minute and a half and I am going to after that time, it'll have just the right amount of silver kind of connected to that plate. That collodion acts as a glue and it actually pulls the, the silver iodized and uh, right onto that plate right there. Um, I'm going to take it out of here um, and put it into my, my uh, plate holder here. And this is um, light tight as well. Again, this is light sensitive the entire way. So we need to make sure uh, that it doesn't touch any light that we don't want it to. And once it goes into here, we'll close this up. And this is gonna be what we're gonna stick in the back of the camera and pull the light slide up just at the right moment and let the image, uh, the light hit it to create that image there. Cool, so um, I have to do this in a dark room. All this sunlight right here would spoil that image. So um, let's pull our dark room box up close it up. Um, some people use tents for this. Some people use actual dark rooms. Uh, for me, this portable box is really, really convenient. I could take it anywhere. It just takes, uh, just put it in the back of my truck. And again, it's a wet plate clothing process. It has to stay wet the entire time. That means each one of these, you can only have about maybe 15, 20 minutes at the max uh, to actually create one. Um, the moment they dry out, uh, they're they're no they're no good. They're they're completely useful, useless. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm just gonna check the silver and just make sure that I've got enough on it. It's been about a minute and a half or so. Let's put a little bit of red light and kind of check the plate. I think it does look pretty good. Get a paper towel. We're gonna wipe off the excess on the back here. Um, and that makes sure that anything that uh, doesn't flow around the outside and add more chemistry to it. Okay, so we're cleaning up the outside here. Again, this is uh, light sensitive. We're gonna throw it into our plate holder box very carefully. Um, because it is wet, you could also very easily, uh, you could scratch it. So anything that I, if I touched it with, with my, my uh, fingers at all, that would just kind of smudge that silver iodides around and it yeah, would create uh, what we call an artifact. And any of those dust particles that fell on it right before I uh, put it in here as well are gonna be part of that image. Um, so now we've got this light type box and we're gonna take it to the back and uh, put it in the back of our camera and take our shot here. So think of this as like a giant piece of film in there, light sensitive, only uh, I just made it a few moments ago. So let's go check it out. First thing is uh, I need to make sure that he's in focus. And so we do it the old fashioned way. You can actually might be able to see a bit of an image in there. 
Oh, that looks good with me. Um, one cool thing about these, these old cameras is you can do a lot with the different focal range. You can actually con just contort this whole entire camera and, uh, and mess around with the focus. Um, uh, the lens that we're gonna be using today is this is a 1914 Voigtlander. Um, so uh, I always like to think like maybe this, this thing saw World War I or something, it's kind of cool. All right. Cool, um, so I'm pretty happy with my composition here. We're gonna be shooting into the shade. Shade gives a little bit less contrasty, a little bit more full uh, images. I'm gonna go for right around a second or so for my exposure, and I'm gonna use my hat. We're just gonna stick it right into the back of the camera there. We're gonna pull the dark slide. Is Jason 5000 ready? ready? Are you gonna stand super still for one second? All right. So we're gonna pull the slide here. Three, two, one. And there it is. We've taken a shot, close it back up. So now we've got our development that's gonna happen here. So um, first of all, I've got a uh, de developer that is a copper sulfate, ferrous sulfate, um, alcohol, uh, glacial acetic acid, and water. Um, and all those are mixed together to, to basically what this is gonna do um, is change uh, the images, the part of the image that was touched by light, by the energy of the light, um, it's gonna tur turn that into uh, uh, molecular silver. So actually metallic silver here. So this is actually uh, the hang up for most people that are starting, it's the most difficult. I have to get this liquid across the, the plate as fast as I can and as even as I can. And then uh, I need to watch and I need to arrest that development, meaning I need to stop it with water, just the right moment. Um, if I go too long, it'll all go white. If it's not, if it's not long enough, um, it'll be really dark. So let's take a, take a uh, go at it here. Set. I've got a little thing in there, there in the middle of it. So yeah, it's a little long, my exposure, but there's an image there. So let's open it up and we get to see what our image actually looks like here. All right, so the final step that we're gonna do here, and this is the, this is the magical moment. Uh, this is the moment I, uh, it, it, Every single time, it just makes me so happy, and everybody loves watching it. Um, and this is where I'm gonna pour the fix, and the fix is basically gonna strip everything except for that reacted silver, metallic silver on the plate away. There's not gonna be anything left. It's gonna, all the salts, everything we else we added to get to this point, um, it's gonna be stripped away by this solution right here. And now you've got your tintype there. I'll have to do a very extensive cleaning process to get everything off, all the different chemicals, and if I do that right, the only thing you're left with is that metallic silver on a black plate, if you remember right. It was the black plate that we were using. Um, so the, the darks are just, they're, they're just nothing. They're just uh, the black plate shining through. Um, anything that's, that's white, gray, it's, a, it's molecules of silver, metallic silver, that's laying right up on top of the plate, um, which is kind of, kind of, I think it's a beautiful thing. Afterwards, um, after I do the extensive washing, we, we dry it out, uh, becomes a little bit uh, harder. We don't stop there because that silver can still be scratched off, uh, silver can still tarnish, and so we actually are gonna put a, a layer of varnish over the top of this image, and it's gonna last for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, and people in the future, Jason 5000 will be uh, their inspiration, I'm sure.